Bread for Words, a Frederick Douglass story, written by Shana Keller, illustrated by Kayla Stark. I know where I was born, not when. It was Tuckahoe, Maryland. I lived free as a bird near the bay in a small cabin with Grandma. There wasn't a whole lot to do inside our cramped cabin, so I called to the little the birds, the frogs, the cats, and the dogs. I chirped and barked and squabbled until even the animals couldn't tell if I was one of their own. One day, Grandma told me I would have to leave. Why, I asked. We belong to old masters, she said. We are slaves. What does that mean? I thought I belonged to Grandma. They won't teach you a thing but to work, and you don't have a choice. But why am I a slave? I didn't want to be told when to work, where to work, how to work, and not have a choice. Grandma was silent on the day we left the cabin early in the morning. We walked 12 long miles on a day swamped with heat and bugs to a place called Great House Farm. When we arrived, children ran out to see me. They surrounded me, laughing and teasing me so. Then Grandma left without saying goodbye. I met my brothers and sisters at the Great House, but I didn't know them well. Without Grandma, I was too sad to play. Then I met Daniel. He lived in the Great House. We hunted and hiked and fished together. Daniel occasionally would share his cakes with me. He showed me the Great House and all the grand rooms inside, including his. Except for the color of our skin, it was hard to know why we were different. Daniel was not a slave. He wasn't born into it. At night, Daniel slept in a warm bed with a full belly. I had no bed. On the coldest night, I slept with a bag used to carry corn. It wasn't long enough to cover my feet, so I put it over my head so I didn't have enough to eat or enough clothes to stay warm. I didn't even know my age, but Daniel knew his. When his tutor came, he taught Daniel to read and write and speak. I wanted to learn, too, but Grandma was right. They didn't give me a choice. I was not old enough to work in the field. I was told to clean the yard, keep the birds out of the garden, and drive the cows. No matter how bad I wanted to learn and read, to read and write, they wouldn't teach me a thing. It was illegal, they said. Unlawful. Unsafe. Why? I walked like them. I talked like them. I walked and talked exactly like them. I showed them I could. Is that why I was sent to Baltimore, far away from my brothers and sisters? I left the plantation the same way Grandma did, without saying goodbye. In Baltimore, I live with Mr. Hugh Odd, old kin to old master, and his wife, Miss Sophia. <coughs> I was told to take care of the little Thomas, their young son. City life was different from plantation life. There was plenty for food for me to eat and warm, clean clothes for me to wear. At night, I now had a good straw bed with covers. Mrs. Sophia was kind at first. She knew a little of, as little of slavery as I did. When she read to Thomas from the Bible, I followed along. To my surprise, she taught me what no one else would, my ABCs. She taught me how to spell next. I felt proud to know three and four letter words. She was proud of me too. But when Mr. Ault saw what was what I could do, anger caught a hold of him. He should knew, know nothing but to do as he is told, he said. If you teach Freddie to how to read, well, there would be no keeping him. He forbade Mrs. Sophia from teaching me. From that moment on, I understood the pathway from slavery to freedom. If I learned to read, I could loosen the chains of bondage. I couldn't give up, but how would I learn now that I lost my teacher. Thomas grew older. I was told to carry his books and walk him to school. An idea came to me. I met a lot of hungry boys on the streets. The boys were between nine and 12 years old. Was I as old as them? I remember how I hated pictures of hunger in my belly. This time my hunger was a different from theirs. When I was sent on errands, I always took a book, my book with me and I took extra bread. When I saw the boys on the streets, I offered them bread for words. It worked with their help at different times and in different places. I finally learned to read. But to break free from slavery, I knew I had to learn how to write next. 
a new idea came to me in the shipyard. I watched the carpenters carve letters and pieces of wood to show which part of the ship it would be used for. I soon learned the names of these letters. They carved L for larboard or left side, F for forward, S for starboard, the right side, and A for aft, the stern. With a lump of chalk, I wrote on fences, bricks, and pave walls and pavement. I copied these four letters until I could write them from memory. To learn the rest of the alphabet, I challenged the boys on the street who knew I could write. I said I could write as well as them. They didn't believe me. I carefully wrote the letters that I had practiced. Beat that. Unable to resist my game, they wrote the letters they knew. I paid attention, close attention to the ones I didn't know. At home, when Thomas finished his copy books, they were set aside and forgotten. I used the books to trace the letters again and again until I could make them without all without looking at the books. After nearly seven years, I finally succeeded in learning how to read and write. Mr. Ault was right. There would be no keeping me. My chains had been broken. <laughs>